Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where today John Cole and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco. Hey, Manny, great to see you again. How are you? Oh, just uh, sizzling. It's been, it's you know, it's a hot summer, <laughs> so you know how that goes. <laughs> so, Manny, I've got a bone to pick with Hollywood, and and you're the guy to help me. I thought you were going to have uh, a bone to pick with me. I'm glad it's only Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Hollywood in their um, in their goal to have a big star, uh, you know, lead a movie. I think they often miscast people, and my favorite miscasting is Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher. I, I read all the Jack wow. Reacher books. He was supposed to be six foot six, big hulking guy, uh, quiet uh, type. And Tom Cruise just was not Jack Reacher. He just so you really you would have preferred Dwayne Johnson. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I, actually, that's about right. They have a TV series now out on Jack Reacher with a new actor, whose name I don't know, who is perfect, and he's he's the right type, and he's physically right for it. So, well, but it's well, it's not uncommon for them to. No, there's a massive history. Person. Yeah, it, it it's a massive history of miscast actors going way back. I mean, you could go back to. Casablanca, where Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman were the right characters, but they almost cast Dennis Morgan and Ann Sheridan. And I oh, realized oh. that I realized that Ann Sheridan would have brought more oomph to the to the role, but I don't think Ilsa needed oomph. <laughs> I think it was perfect casting. Mm. So, yes. but you know that's retrospect. Yes, and and they almost cast Frank Sinatra or Cary Grant as uh, the Music Man. But uh, wow. Sinatra, to his credit, was like, if you cast me, uh, I will not go see it. I will not promote it. The only person that should play it is Cause... Robert Preston because he was brilliant on Broadway. Was, and right. they all acquiesced yeah. to Frank Sinatra's uh, suggestion. So that, that was good. But there have been some definite miscasts. And let me begin with one of the Bonds, James Bond. George Lazenby in Her Majesty's Secret Service did it once, uh, didn't do it again, uh, thank goodness. Uh, he was kind of the tweener between, uh, between uh, 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 Sean Connery and Roger Moore. Yeah. But he was the Bond that actually got married to Diana Rigg, no less. Uh, but uh, it's always been said that he was the weakest Bond and definitely a miscast role there. I don't know. What do you think? You know, it, he didn't bother me. I know people badmouthed him when it, when it came out. He didn't bother me that much. I, he was definitely not the best Bond, you know, of all right. the guys who did it. I really liked Roger Moore uh, because he had been the saint, and I thought it was a very similar character. But right. a lot of people didn't like Roger Moore either. Yeah. Well, he had a little more of a sense of humor, right? Right, Art? Well, a couple, a, couple th a couple things I see is that he wasn't Sean Connery. That was the first yeah. problem. OK, yeah. <laughs> so I see a lot of the miscasts as uh, Hollywood attaching to a name because they want a box office draw. Right. OK, irrespective right. of the fact that they probably aren't right for the role. And I know that you're going to tell us about some of those. But I think that uh, this un not to be named actor who I can't remember, OK, definitely got screwed of any chance of because uh, he, he he replaced Sean Connery, and he was right. bombed. James Bond. Yeah, nobody, Roger, somebody had to take the hit. Yeah, and Roger Moore it. gladly yeah. took it. You know, any any actor that has been cast again opposite Audrey Hepburn, mm. usually way older, and it just didn't work. Humphrey Bogart in Sabrina didn't work. Uh, Clark Gable opposite uh, Audrey Hepburn didn't work. Gary Cooper opposite Audrey Hepburn definitely didn't work. In love in the afternoon, boy, that yes. was that was really he he looked. It only made him look older, and that yeah, and that's sad. You're and, absolutely right. And Cary Grant kind of worked with Audrey Hepburn and Charade, but that was really strong writing, and they really played off of Cary Grant's you know very charming character that he, yeah. he had cultivated. So that just about worked, but barely. So unfortunately, they had this idea that this young ingenue would play really well opposite really old established actors, and really they did it to Doris Day as well. I mean, they yeah. would 
these these older actors, and it just didn't seem to work out. Uh, but the movies turned out to be popular. The critics uh, felt that it didn't work, but you know sometimes the, the fans don't go listen to critics. So there you go. Hmm. Well, that's why these famous actors get cast is because they have a following. If right. you're a Tom Cruise fan, you're going to go see him no matter what the movie's about, no matter who he's cast against or who he's playing. You know. Right. Right, right. Um, and, it, and, and there's always a Tom Cruise like Top Gun where, you know, who, you can't picture anybody else but Tom Cruise in there. Right, right. Um, yeah. There was also Guys and Dolls. And the problem here is not Sinatra. Sinatra was fabulous. Mm. But truth be told, he should have played the Marlon Brando character. And they should have brought Sam Levine, a great character actor, but a true star on Broadway. Mm. And he should have played Nathan Detroit because he was just perfect for the role. And if Sinatra, who had to do a lot of singing uh, as in the Marlon Brando role, he probably would have been better off. And he actually had the hit with Luck Be, Be a Lady. But if you watch the film, it's Marlon Brando who actually sings. Yeah. And so Marlon Brando was the one that was miscast. But, you know, truth be told, Marlon Brando would experiment with a lot of roles. I mean, he would not he would not just be uh, settling on just any kind of role playing himself. Essentially, he would play a lot of different character roles. And yes. so um, so Guys and Dolls was a way for him to try a musical. It just, you know, he mm. was OK. I mean, I, I believe the character, but Frank would have been a lot better. So, so let me ask you a question to, to, to prove that we don't really rehearse these necessarily that well. Is there a, a standout miscast role that won an Oscar or was a contender? Well, that's a great question, and I have one for you. Oh, yeah, okay. there are those, okay. oh, there are those who absolutely love every role in Judgment at Nuremberg. Everybody's solid, and had it not been the year of West Side Story, probably the best picture of the year. But the, for me, the one role that did not work for me, though he did receive an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, was Montgomery Clift. Montgomery Clift um, did not really work for me as the um, as the uh, the Jewish man who was tested on, you know, unfortunately, with the yeah. horrors, the atrocities of what the Nazis were doing. I, I did not really, I didn't believe the role. He struggled with the role. Um, basically, Stanley Kramer, the producer and director, spoon-fed him the role, and he got through it. And for his, you know, for his efforts, he was nominated for an Oscar. But, you know, for me, he's the weak link in the movie. But, you know, I'll say this. And that's where you're going to get the comments here at YouTube right below saying, what are you, nuts? He was fabulous. But, yeah. you know, if you compare him to the other supporting actor uh, that, that was nominated, which was Judy Garland, she was magnificent. And has she not been up against Rita Moreno, easily could have won the Oscar. Um, Montgo uh, Montgomery Cliff just didn't match it for me. Maximilian Schell was absolutely spectacular, wins an Oscar for his role. But if you want to take a, a supporting role in that movie, you know, Warner Klemperer was very good as the uh, as the real firebrand Nazi. He was really, really good. Yeah. And uh, essentially, Burt Lancaster is in a supporting part and in a very, very quiet role. He plays a very, very good character as one of the uh, one of those that's accused of atrocity. So it's a great movie. Montgomery Cliff did get the nomination. But for me, I think he was miscast. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um it's it's an interesting phenomenon, though, because in a way, that's part of the, the the M.O. of Hollywood. Get me a big star to front the movie or it can't be made. Yeah. And sometimes it just doesn't matter who the big star is. You know, they just well, need a name. There, there is a movie that unfortunately has kind of gone by the wayside, but I think it's just a spectacular movie called What a Way to Go. Really funny, uh, really known for the yeoman's work done by uh, Shirley MacLaine, opposite top stars of the day, Paul Newman, Robert Mitchum, Dick Van Dyke, mm. Gene Kelly, Dean Martin. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, and, and she was fabulous, but the role wasn't made for her. It was made for Marilyn Monroe. However, mm. Marilyn 
unfortunately died prematurely yeah. and they had to find somebody to play the role. And, and quite frankly, I can't imagine Marilyn doing a better part than what Shirley had to do in this really, really tough assignment. And Marilyn had a fragile psyche to begin with. So whoever would have directed this film opposite all of these actors would have had a tough time with Monroe. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it wonder, I wonder what would have happened. And maybe it would have been a more popular movie with Marilyn Monroe because she was such an icon at that point. But it really, it was really good work by Shirley MacLaine. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a little bit different than miscasting, you know? Right. Um, you know, when somebody ends up with a role, um, and they, they do a good job, they fit it. They just aren't the original choice. Right. Sometimes it works out much better. You know, you, yeah. you have to ask yourself, why could they ever imagine that other person? I, you know, this was perfect. <laughs> right. Right. I, I'll give you one more. Um, Kirk Douglas for years and years and years wanted to get one flew over the cuckoo's nest made. With, yeah. uh, with with him as the star. And it never happened. Uh, he gave up on it, but his son continued his efforts, got it made. With Jack but Nicholson. By that time, yeah, but by that time, Kirk Douglas was too old for the role and, they, and Jack Nicholson. Again, not miscast, but it might have been miscast if Kirk Douglas had played the part. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he had that whimsy in him in the, in the 60s that he had later as he got older. To, to, to get away with the kind of role that Jack Nicholson portrayed when it finally was made. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking yeah. that you're re, uh, regaling us with these stories, is that sometimes they cast somebody who you couldn't even think of casting. Who would you cast for uh, the Moulin Rouge? Who would, you <laughs> who would you cast for that? That was brilliant casting, but it could have been miscast by any number of people. Uh, are you talking about Jose Ferrer? Jose Ferrer. No. Yeah. yeah, 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 no. Yeah, many times you, you wonder, you know that uh, Harper Lee did <laughs> not originally want Gregory Peck, although they became lifelong friends after the making right. of To Kill a Mockingbird. Harper Lee wanted Spencer Tracy. Hmm. And I'm not sure that Spencer Tracy would have done a, a, a bad job at all, but he might have been a little too old for the role, but he would have been, I think, just magnificent. That said, you know, I mean, it's the iconic role for, for Gregory Peck. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, certain people want certain roles. Sometimes they get their way and to the detriment of the movie. Sometimes they, they do get their way and you think what might have been and that could have been a, a movie. I, I mean, I, I, I hearken back to Casablanca again. Would Casablanca have been the movie that we talk about today with Dennis Morgan as the, as the star? No. <laughs> no, definitely not. I love Dennis Morgan. You know, I'm very serviceable, light comedian, but wow, in Casablanca, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> well, you know, I, it brings up the whole thing about actors is yeah. uh, they hate to be typecast. They all right. want to believe they can do any role in the book, but the fact is that we, as viewers, right. see them. We know about them. We know. We just look at them and we see something. Right. We see kindness. We see toughness. We see beauty, yeah. we see, uh, whatever it is, they can't escape that. No, and I'll give you one more. Imagine Bella Lugosi as Frankenstein. Well, you get to because he got to play Frankenstein mm. in the 1940s. Yeah. But in the, he was slated to be the original 1931 Frankenstein, but wow. he refused the role because he did not want to wear all of that makeup. He wanted to be recognized. He, he had that movie star mentality. He felt yeah. that... People came to see him, recognize him, and enjoy him. So, fortunately for Boris Karloff, he got the uh, he got the role instead. Yeah. The children of the night, what the beautiful music they make. <laughs> My favorite line. So, you know what you're Lugosi. suggesting here? That art is Renfield, and I don't know if that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I keep thinking of young Ren young Frankenstein when you say Renfield. I want to hear horses. Well, Frau that's Blucher. A, far, far Blucher, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Manny, yeah. This is, and, and then this they see a great. movie. You see a movie, and every every character is perfectly cast. That, then you know, wow, a lot of work was went into this movie to make sure that every 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 star, every piece of the puzzle works. So yeah, I agree with you. These movie moguls, when they get in the way, can really muck it up with miscasting, hmm. and that's really a shame when there's good writing, good direction, good yeah. cinematography. 
Um, but there, you know, at the end of the day, nothing, nothing makes us remember a movie. A movie does not become more iconic without a perfect role suited to a perfect movie. And, and that should be. Perfect. And I would like to say that there's one thing we can all agree on the three, well, at least John and I and the audience that you are the perfect casting for forgotten Hollywood or Hollywood wow. historian par excellence. You're going to make me blush. I'm turning bright brown as we speak. <laughs> Thank you, Manny. Manny, thanks. You guys take care. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.